everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, as you guys can see from the clips before this, I put up some training footage, did a little bit of recording in my last workout, and uh, there are always people who don't understand a lot of what I do when I train. Sometimes they think certain things I do is dangerous, and they don't understand. It's actually often quite the opposite. Uh, so let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about it. All right, a lot of people aren't aware that I haven't been doing training footage lately, and it's not because of anything conspiracy or crazy or anything else like I'm hiding that I'm in a wheelchair. It more has to do with the fact that no one watches it because I don't do a lot of variation in exercises and because I'm an advanced lifter you don't see large increases in strength really. Uh, they tend to come very slow, very gradual. Uh, again, I'm a middle-aged advanced lifter, you know. <laughs> I don't add 50 pounds to my exercises inside of a year. It just doesn't happen unless I were to go blast enormous amounts of gear. Uh, which I'm just not willing to do at my age, guys. I don't believe in using large amounts when you're over 30 years old. It's a real bad idea. Uh, but that's just my opinion. So I decided to do it today uh, just because randomly my girlfriend said, you know, we should probably kind of dispel this myth. Because what had been happening, a lot of people were, were getting really belligerent about it. And I was banning people every day for jumping up, screaming that I'm in a wheelchair and hiding it. And some of the people... It, I didn't ban everyone for it, but a lot of people got really belligerent and weird and crazy. And there's always crazy rumors going on out there about me. Some of it's just shocking to me, the things that I see. And I'm just like, wow, this is insane. This is ape shit, fucking nuts. Uh, a lot of it blows my mind. Uh, a lot of misconceptions out there. But people were like getting more and more insistent on it. And we did a joke, I think it was last week. I was sitting down between sets in the gym. And we do post training footage up on Instagram and things sometimes, just not on my channel. And um, she jumped up in my lap and took a selfie and said, hey, you're sitting down. I bet people are going to think that we're still trying to hide the fact that you're in a wheelchair. And we thought it was funny. And we put it up and actually it got worse. So apparently a lot of people thought <laughs> that we were faking it and I'm sitting down at the gym uh, because I'm in a wheelchair. But that's not the case. Um, I'm clearly up and able to lift heavy weight for reps and uh, pin lay rows and everything else. I'm clearly up and mobile and still plenty strong by most people's standards. So let me talk a little bit about some of the training there. Um, deadlifts. One of the things I get people who comment on, they're always like, oh no, you just drop the weight. Actually, I don't drop the weight because I'm not allowed to at my gym and because it's an old habit that I have from being a competitive power lifter is that you have to have some control over the weight on the way down. What I'm doing there would be meat legal, but actually I believe eccentric reps on deadlifts reduce recovery and they increase injury rates. I believe the best way to make progress on a deadlift is to turn loose of the weight at the top. Um, however, unfortunately, have it as a power lifter, uh, I don't because, again, you can't do that in meat. So I try to stay meat legal uh, still to this day, even though I don't compete anymore. And also because, again, my gym might not like it because I am dropping 500 plus pounds. Uh, if I just turn loose, it might damage their floor, their platform. They might get upset about it. But Elliot Hulse, who is a very, very famous, probably one of the, the single most well-known strength based uh, YouTube channel, he dropped the weight on his deadlifts also. That is actually, in my opinion, the best way to deadlift is to lock it at the top and turn loose of the weight and then re-pick it up on each rep and completely skip the eccentric. The eccentric reps on deadlifts are dangerous in my opinion. Uh, one, because I believe it, it loads the back in a way that excessively fatigues the lower back, makes it harder to recover and it makes it more difficult to train in general throughout the week when you do that. Uh, number two, people who, again, oftentimes control the eccentric are the same people who have the bad habit of bouncing off the floor and doing touch and go, which I believe is the single most dangerous thing you can do on a deadlift. So because of those two things in general, I'm against slow eccentric on deadlifts. I think they're dangerous and I think they hurt your progress. And I don't care what people think about, oh, you'll build more size. Look at my fucking back and hamstrings. Uh, do I really need more size on my back and hamstrings? I don't think so. And you know what? I've never seen a strong lifter who skips their eccentric reps on all of their various pulling, whether it's power cleans or uh, deadlifts or anything else, who fails to develop a massive lower back and hamstrings. As long as they're using a heavy weight with progressive overload, they develop. Eccentric reps are overhyped as being necessary for muscle growth or even that great of a tool. They're an okay tool, but they have their drawbacks. Uh, the deadlift is one of those lifts that I simply do not believe on a conventional or a sumo deadlift uh, for people to do slow eccentric reps. I think it's bad, I think it's dangerous, and I think it's counterproductive to your training, in my opinion. A lot of strength coaches agree with me. A lot of world level strength coaches agree with me. So, you know, maybe their opinions are wrong also, who knows. Uh, pen lay rows, pen lay rows. Um, my form was sloppy on these. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna make excuses on that. 
Uh, I guess I was just fatigued on them. It was sloppier than usual, but I recorded it anyways. Uh, truth be told, I probably should have taken 20 pounds off, and what I will do next time I go to do them at the gym, I'll probably start 20 pounds lighter than that and see if my form is cleaner. Um, I felt my body English was a little bit excessive for a pin lay row. Now, did I still get good stimulation? Yes. Did my back, did my biceps, everything else uh, get stimulated from it? Yeah, absolutely. But it's just not a true pin lay row if I'm having English of the lower back and not doing them strict. Now, granted, it's a relatively heavy weight for a pin lay row by most standards, but that's besides the point. I have a strong back. That's not an excuse. Um, so, honestly, because it's more of an explosive movement and it's more about speed and power than maximum weight on the bar, probably next time I do them, I'll take 20 pounds off. So, if people want to criticize my body English on those, valid criticism. I'm not going to disagree with you. Um, fair point. Uh, otherwise, yeah, again, pin lay row. You don't do much of an eccentric on those. Some people choose to turn loose of them. Um, I don't. It's a concentric-based explosive movement. Uh, but it's also a fantastic mass builder, fantastic power builder, and it has tremendous carryover to your deadlift and bench press. It's one of the best accessory movements out there for those two exercises. Uh, and it's a great exercise for any athlete who needs explosiveness in their upper body, uh, like an MMA fighter, uh, boxer, or anyone like that. I think the pin lay row is a fantastic exercise. Uh, also American football players, great exercise. If you do any of those things, throw it into your routine. Just don't go too high reps because then you're just turning it into really uh, more of a metabolic fatigue, which can work also. It can work also, but you're losing some of the explosive component when you go over about five to six reps. Uh, dips. Um, lately, some people will say, hey, you're not going very low on those dips. I don't go as low uh, when I'm doing body weight because I tend to do very high reps and I stay more upright. I tend to lean over more. If you guys watched the previous clips and I do them weighted with chains around my neck, I lean over a bit more and I go deeper. It has to do with body angles and the safety of the shoulder. Dips are an exercise that are one of the best exercises out there. They're fantastic, but they are potentially dangerous. And that danger is for any given body angle for you going too low and putting excessive strain on your shoulder joint. Um, you need to be very aware of it. You need to be aware of where your level of tightness is for each angle, whether you're lean forward or upright. When you do a dip, and you need to be aware of what your limits are. You need to think about it from the perspective of how you would do those as a natural movement. Usually if someone was doing a dip type movement in a, you know, a wild environment, it'd be up on a tree branch or a wall or some rock, and your hands wouldn't be able to go past your torso. That's usually a good indicator of appropriate full range of motion on that exercise because when you get between bars on a dip, it is possible to go low enough to damage your shoulders. Um, so again, you need to find your own natural limit there. And when you find it, you need to be careful and not stress beyond it. Because again, fantastic exercise, great upper body exercise. Some people call the dips and weighted dips both upper body squats. Um, probably not an appropriate term. It really is. They're fantastic for your core, your delts, your triceps, your chest, everything. Uh, all around, just a fantastic exercise. I'm a big fan of them. Obviously, I did 25 of them today with just body weight. Uh, but I do them weighted sometimes too, and I undulate through that, and I rotate through rep ranges. And right now, uh, I'm doing really, really high reps with body weight, which means either, you know, I do one or two sets of around 24 or 25, or I come in and do three sets of 20. And maybe on the last set, when I do that final set, uh, if I have more in the tank after the 20th rep, I'll try to grind out one or two more. But um, I really don't go over about 24 or 25, even with uh, only one to two sets. And then, you know, then a couple weeks, I'll rotate back to doing weight. And I work different rep ranges on those. Uh, but yeah, again, at the moment, I'm just doing them with body weight, so it's really, really high rep. But with body weight, when I don't have a weight on there, I just tend to stay upright more. I like it. It's more comfortable. Uh, but I do go a little shorter on the range of motion. Uh, and again, that's overall safety reasons. And uh, again, has to do with body angle. <laughs> Notice on other videos, I uh, go a little deeper when I'm leaning forward with the weight. But I'm also doing less reps. So uh, that's what's going on with the dips. And as you guys can see, everyone keeps talking about, oh, you're getting fatter, you're getting fatter. No, guys, I'm sitting down. It's camera angles and lighting. As you guys can see with me standing up, am I bigger? Yes. Have I gained body weight? Yes. Have I gained fat? No, I haven't. Um, my belt sizes are the same. My pants sizes are the same. I'm in the same loop on my belt, which means my waistline is not getting bigger. Uh, what you guys see sometimes, again, because I'm sitting down, sometimes I'm leaning forward doing stuff, everyone's stomach pokes out a little bit. Even ripped guys, their stomach pokes out a little bit when they're sitting down. Welcome to the real world. It's just angles. And I don't really care a lot about camera angles. It's not something I care about. I'm not into all that fake natty Instagram, half natty lighting bullshit. Um, I'm just here to put out information. 
So I don't really care. And obviously I eat a really high fiber diet. I eat brown rice and stuff every single day. You guys see my salads and stuff on Instagram. When you eat four plates of salad and a couple of big bowls of brown rice, your stomach is going to stick out more. That's just common sense, guys. It's called fiber and roughage. So hopefully that clarifies a few things and clears up some rumors, gives you guys some ideas of what's going on with my training these days. So I uh, hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.